Now remember that you guys can do, you're using your Pozo paper, that's what this assignment is printed on, but it can be any size and in any number. So I've decided that my, that I want, this is the size of my print. I think this is a beautiful size, it's got the nice decal on the bottom, and I cut a bunch of pieces of Pozo to be this size. I'm gonna make my addition on this size paper. Again, could be smaller, could be bigger. Somebody in my last class asked if they could put two pieces of Pozo together and make something huge. And I said, absolutely. But this is the size that I wanna do for this print. Anytime you're doing silk screen, I, here's my good paper, I've got four sheets of it. I also recommend cutting a bunch of other paper that's the same size, because we're gonna work up, anytime we're doing silk screen, we have to sort of work toward our good paper. So I've cut a couple other sheets that are a similar size, and I've set that down. Whenever we're doing silk screen, it really pays to spend tons of time setting up, because once that ink goes into the screen, you're under the gun. Once the ink goes into the screen, you have to make a print every 45 seconds, or else the ink will dry in the screen. So it really pays to make sure everything around is completely prepared for me to, to, to be printing. So really spending your time making the perfect setup pays because you don't wanna be like actually printing and saying like, oh my goodness, I forgot my tape. And that's also a reason to have a partner and to, and to work in pairs. Yes, Alyssa. Um, so the paper will be completely dry then? Paper will be completely dry. Yes, the paper dries pretty quickly. Like it's possible and I'll, sh yeah, it, it dries in a few minutes. I'll show you today. I'll probably print once and then print right back onto it in like a couple minutes. I think it was more specific to whether we wet the paper or not. The paper's dry, yes, thank you for clarifying that. The pa we do not wet the paper for this process. Good point. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my, um, I'm, oh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp my silk screen to, the, um, to this table. And I just have these little clamps. I'm gonna butterfly bolt them down. And now my, now my um, silk screen can go up and down. It goes up and down in the exact same place every time. And that's important for this process. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my paper roughly under my screen like that. And I can actually see through my screen at this stage. I can see the edges of my paper. So what I'm gonna do, so this is a way to make a print with absolutely no photo stencil and almost no preparation. I've got, oh, you know what else I wanna do? Just in case my paper moves during this next part, I'm gonna mark out where I want my paper to land every time I print. So I'm gonna rest this up like this. There's my paper right there. I'm gonna make three lines on the board of where my paper's gonna land every time. I'm right-handed, so I put two on the right bottom corner, and I put one over here. As long as I line this up, as long as I line every paper up with those three points, it'll land in the same exact place every time. Then I'm going to put my screen down, and I want my, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a, a, a large square of color down on the paper. So I want about an inch border inside the paper, and I'm just gonna put an area of color down. You can imagine that if I was working, if I wanted a total like Tomashi Jackson, Rauschenberg effect, I might not care where it landed on the paper. I might just wanna, I just might wanna print onto my paper kind of anywhere. I would still recommend setting up carefully and working slowly, but when I show you guys next week how to do the photo stencil, I'll also include how to, how to sort of use a big piece of paper and just put your image anywhere. We'll also do that. Um, but this would be if you want image to land in the same place every time, you want the, um, the, you know, the, the stencil to sort of be more reliably uh, centered. So now I can see, oh crappers. <laughs> You can see the edge. I can actually look through the screen and I can, I can really um, faintly see the outline of my paper. So I'm using the blue tape and I'm taping off. Um, I can't, I kind of can see it. 
I'm taping off where the edge of my paper is. Oh, maybe I'll put a little piece of tape at the top so I even know what that was. You don't have to do this for registration, but I'm just kind of doing it for, to tell myself where that is. Now I can see through. Um, I'm giving myself, I'm, I'm bringing the tape in about a half an inch and I'm just giving myself, basically, I'm making a stencil right now that's sort of an open area in the middle of my screen. And that's where, um, that's the printing area. That's, what's, that's what I'm gonna make a solid you know, layer of color. Um, I'm also going to extend that, um, remember, this is open. The ink will go through that. But now all these areas outside the tape are open too. So I'm gonna cover those as well. If you had like, um, I have just like a sliver down the side here. I have a sliver down the side here. If you have a big area, like if you just wanted to do this in one like tiny area, you could actually take a piece of paper and, um, You could take a piece of paper and you could cover, like if I if my if the area that I wanted to print was just like really tiny, you could cover that whole area with a piece of paper. But I'm just going to do it with tape for now. Cover that up, and you want it to be almost like a little swimming pool. The only area that I want ink to be able to go through is right in the area that I've designated. And then that's pretty good. I might go on the other side of that just to, just to capture that last little area. I might do it from the other side actually. Now, I have all of that closed off except for an open area right where I want the ink to go. And I have my paper is ready to go. I've got my, um, I've got my, pa my good paper, my practice paper, and I've got my stencil ready to go. Actually, maybe I'll include the stencil in this just to make it more exciting. My stencil is, I'm doing kind of the same thing. I mean, you don't have to do it this way. This is sort of more related to our last project but I'm using my stencil and I'm using the negative shapes. Maybe I'll just go ahead and use part of the negative shape for this just to add some character to it. When I use my stencil, this is kind of the cool thing about um, the, about using newsprint in this stencil process. All you have to do at this stage is stick your stent, is put your stencil over your paper where you want it to print. And the first time my ink goes through, I'm going to start on bad paper and then I'll move on to my good. The first time the ink goes through, it's going to pick up that paper stencil and stick it to the back of the um, screen. So I'll save these for my next color and I'm basically ready to go. I'm going to start out with this. Um, okay, here's our silk screen ink. It's kept in the cupboard, in a locked cupboard. Just ask to use it. We'll have it all out during class. Just ask to use it when you're in the open lab hours. Um, the colors are like, we have like the primaries and black. It's not super, it, there's not a huge range, but you can mix colors and do interesting stuff with it. But you know, it's sort of a matter of use what's here and see how far it gets you. We have a lot of it, but it's, um, but it's not like the best range of colors. I am going to make, the primaries in black. Okay. Like ultramarine? No. Like like No, it's more just like I I feel like their their blue might be like cyan or something. Oh, like printer colors. Like printer, printer colors. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like CMYK. I think we have CMYK. Okay. But I'm not totally sure. Our own colors, what would we would it be the speedball thing? Yes. Work? If you're gonna buy your own colors, speedball is great. And you don't need anything fancy like uh, textile ink. 
all you need is acrylic. It's like the cheapest one or whatever. All the other kinds are have like uh, um, hardeners and stuff in them that can go through the wash, but you don't need that for paper. Yes. I have a follow-up question. Is there any reason why your stencil is made out of like paper instead of like the Duralar? Well, for some weird, you could do it out of Duralar, but for some weird reason, newsprint works perfectly. It's so thin and absorbent that it sticks right to the screen. And Duralar can work, but it's, sometimes it like falls off or it's too thick or something. Newsprint is the perfect thing to make this kind of a stencil out of. And we have it in the shop. So it's just like the cheapest thing around and it turns out that it's like the best thing to use for this process. Yes. So I want super thin fabric and then- By, by textile. So would that, I think I have actually that white one left yep. over from a free college course. Oh, before. awesome. Um, but would that work also on paper or just? Yes, yes. The textile ink will work on paper. It's beautiful on paper. It's just more expensive than the other kinds of ink. So you can decide when you look at the prices of everything. Yeah, like I have it. Maybe you buy a black. Well, we have tons of black in the shop. So you could sort of go between. Like you could, you could also like burn your stencil. You could print on paper with the shop ink. And then when you go to your textile, mm -hmm. then use the textile ink. That's also an option. But are we okay if we just want to use the class colors? Yes. yes. And are those textile? No, these are not textile. Oh wait, this is textile colors. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's like a range in the shop and you can just sort of mix and match. Some of them were bought for specific projects, but we have, yeah, this is textile, but it doesn't matter. Okay. I guess I could print on the t-shirts. Good to know. Okay, so the, my first order of business. Oh, the other thing that I want to do is I want to find a squeegee. These are hanging in the silkscreen room in there against the wall. You want to look for one that is sh pretty sharp. And when you run your finger over it, it doesn't have any dents or marks in it. You also want it to be smaller than your screen. You can imagine, well, this is smaller in both directions. You want it to be smaller than your screen and bigger than your image area. So I can't use this squeegee because it won't cover my whole image area and I couldn't use one any bigger than this because it wouldn't fit inside my screen bigger than the image smaller than the uh, bigger than the image smaller than the screen it's like one pass with the squeegee right we don't yeah that was a big squeak um wait I think I'm actually bigger than the big squeak. that was a big squeak it's not going to sound so crazy when it actually gets with the ink on it I think I'm too wide for my paper. I couldn't quite see, so I'm gonna come in a little bit. Okay. So all of this stuff should be done well in advance of you getting your ink out, and here's why. Um, Adam, you are going to be my printing friend. <laughs> when I, um, so, and I'll tell you what to do in a minute. The first thing that's gonna happen is I'm gonna put my ink this ink is like has a really weird consistency. You'll see it's a little different than the other ones. It's really different than acrylic paint. It's really different than our printmaking, uh, our other printmaking inks. And this quality that it has, this sort of jello like quality, we describe the ink as being fluffy. <laughs> and the reason it's fluffy is because we want to move it around the screen and we want to be able to control where it is on the screen. <laughs> If it was too runny, it would just run into all the negative areas. But we like that fluffiness because we can sort of move it around. The other thing to make sure you have before you get into Sorry. Sorry. Well, that was that's so like loud. A, I'm sorry. That was like a trap for you. Yeah. Um, the other thing to make sure you have is some of these uh, cardboard chips. Those also help to move the ink around once you get started. And you might use your roll of tape because sometimes we'll want the screen to end up uh, upright like that, and we can use our tape to sort of hold it in place. Nice. Every time you print, there's two strokes that happen on the silk screen. There's the flood stroke and the printing stroke. Both of those happen at a 45 degree angle to the screen. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flood. That puts the ink into the um, into the screen. 
Then I'm gonna take that line of ink that I just flooded with and I'm gonna print onto my paper. Now, I'm, as I lift it up, I'm gonna make sure that my paper came off, but my stencil is gonna stay on the screen. And that's what I get. Actually, that looks really good. Um, and now I'm gonna flood it before I do anything else, I'm gonna flood it again. And that flood stroke is gonna keep, it does two things. It prepares me for the next print, but it also keeps the screen wet so that I don't, so that it's not such a panic to make the next print. So as you can see, that doesn't look that great. I missed some material right there. And also there's a lot of dust on it that looks kind of weird. Um, and I give this to my partner and my partner either puts on a drawing rack or you can just leave it right there. Um, what is the difference between a flood stroke and a printing stroke other than the direction? The, it, it's, the flood stroke is done with the screen up in the air and the printing stroke is when it's down on the actual piece of paper. So let me do it again and I'll show you one more time. So I have my paper lined up on my registration tabs. My stencil now is stuck to my paper or my, my screen, which is good. And now I'm gonna lower the screen again and I'm gonna go, okay. I'm gonna go printing stroke, touching the paper. <laughs> Oh, you know what that might be actually. And then I'm going to take my paper off. Like sometimes the paper gets kind of stuck to the surface. I'm going to take my paper off and then I'm going to do my flood stroke. And that with the flood stroke, my, um, you know, nothing, it's just out here in the open. There's nothing connected to it. I sort of realized what that uh, is causing that weird stripe in there. That is actually. Oh, that's the tape. No, it's not. It's it's in the stents. Like it, it, uh, this screen wasn't actually. I was saying how there's that stain, but I can tell that the screen is open. There's actually a um, that's dried ink. Now I realize in the screen, oh. but that's okay. Like I'll show you in my next step. I'll show you sort of a way around. We'll we'll just do something interesting with it. But um, you might just you know like look at your screen carefully. We're working with sort of like abstraction here, so it doesn't totally matter for this one. But now I can see that there's actually dried ink in the screen right there. And we might be able to wash that out with the sprayer when, um, when we actually, I'll teach you how to do that next week. But that's what those lines are, is that. Um... And so, okay, so now I think I'm ready. This is about as good as I'm gonna get. So I think I'm ready to move on to my, um, my next piece or my good paper. And now I'm gonna go on and make one of those. I've already flooded, so I'm just printing now. I do my print stroke <laughs> and I, um, sink. Yeah. sorry about that, I set those up like a little trap. And now I'm going to do, before I rest it down, I'm going to do my flood stroke. But you can see how the, you can see how kind of, once I get that ink in there, I have to do it every 45 seconds, every minute. It's a rhythm that I just have to keep going. If, it, if at this stage I get a phone call and I go talk to my mom for 45 minutes, the ink will dry in the screen and it will not be good anymore. So that's why once the ink is in the screen, you have to print every 45 seconds, every minute. Um, or else, you know, or else you start to get, the screen starts to close in and you start to lose your, um, your image. Especially when we get into, um, when we start working with our photographic images, you'll see it happen really quickly. Um, now, let's change things up a little bit. And instead of using the negative shape, I'm gonna use one of my positive shapes and I'm gonna change the color slightly. I have flooded the screen, so it should, um, and I'm gonna take that stencil off, that thing that I was using before. This is now probably just for the garbage. Um, and I'm gonna use a different stencil and I'm gonna change my color. If you guys are working sort of, you, you're, you wanna experiment with some layering and some like the similar to the way that we did on the press with our monoprints, you could take your ink off like I'm about to do and just go right into your next color. You can squeeze the ink out um, through printing it. But if you're, um, if you're sort of specific about the color, where it's gonna line up, at this stage you would take the ink out and you would wash it out. 
but in the interest of sort of, I don't know, just doing some experimental stuff and moving on, I'm going to just do it right in front of you and I'll show you what it looks like to kind of squeeze the ink through and change colors on the press. So I'm gonna take my yellow ink off, I don't want this anymore. All that nice fluffy ink is going back into the um, tray or into the jar. Um, silk screening has a lot of material where you need a lot of ink to make the process work to make the squeegee slide, to make the ink run through the screen. You need a lot of ink on the screen, but it doesn't take a lot of ink to actually make the print. Oh my God, it's so boogery. <laughs> um, it doesn't take a lot of ink to actually you know, make the print. So there's a lot of excess that you end up putting back into the, um, into the can, and that's good. That'll be for our, you know, somebody else. Can I have a question? Yes. When we're approaching this edition, are we supposed to make like 15 at a time or do you want to like change an amount in between or is it going to get muddy if you change too fast? Yes to all of that. Okay. Like I, like Silkscreen is really great at making huge amounts of prints. And so I like, I would recommend, I'm sort of cutting this off quickly because I want to like show you the next cool step. But if I was doing this for myself, I would probably make like 30 of what I just did. Some of them I might use for collage. Some of them are just practice. Some of them I might um, print on 20 more times. I would recommend doing a lot of it. And then, um, and then sort of just experimenting and seeing what you like. Let me now do something totally different. Yeah. Um, for the size of the paper, Yeah. Um, do we just get to choose? Because if we're going to be using like all of our paper, can we do small? Or yes. Okay. So that is, remember that rule that I said about using all of your paper? That was exactly for this question that you're asking. If you do a small print, I just want to see that you've, you know, experimented widely. So that's why if you do a print that's like half this size, you have to do like, well, you have to have experimented with like 30 prints or something, because that's all of your Kozo cut down to that size. Yeah. You might only show one or two of them, but you have to have sort of tried it on all the paper. Does that make sense, Connie? Yeah. Do you need to do a collage demo next week when they drop? Okay. Yes. Do you need a, a newsprint uh, stencil? stencil for every print you make? Well, you use them? I want to see that you've experimented with stencils, but it doesn't have to be in your final print that you mm -hmm. um, that you produce in the end. You can like when you show your edition, it might be missing. Well, I don't know. Should that be a rule? We can talk. I mean, that's like three weeks from now. Let's. I kind of think that there might be some prints that end up without that, but I definitely want you to experiment with it. There are also other ways to make the stencil. You could, you could make like a hand cut stencil that you produce in the photographic way that I'll show you next week. Or you might do this stencil part on the printing press and use, you know, use the model print style to make it. So say we wanted to actually use like a newsprint stencil yeah. five times. Yeah. Would we have to make a new stencil each time or can you reuse As them? long as you print in one shot, those newsprint stencils will like last and last. Okay. As long as you like, and that's why, that's the other thing about silk screen is that once you're kind of all set up, you should just plan on like printing and printing. Make it, and that's, a, that's another thing about like using your time wisely and about, um, about making sure you use shop time as like print time. Once you get going, you can make, I mean, you could in like a four hour class period, you could probably make like 60 prints. You might not be done with your edition, but you'll have just made, you know, you'll have put the photograph on a piece of paper like 60 times. It goes really fast. Um, so I would recommend like when you get set up to print, be prepared to just like print, print, print and see what happens. So now I'm going to print in the other direction and I'm going to use this slightly smaller squeegee. You can print in any direction, totally doesn't matter. Now I'm going to be going this way. And this time, I'm going to try it first. Oh, I guess I don't have any more of my bad paper, so I'm going to try it on good paper. Actually, this might be really weird. We'll see what happens. I'm going to do it on there. 
Um, remember that I already flooded this, so it might look really weird, but I'm going to try it anyway. I'm excited. Yeah, it's very exciting. And I'm going to put my tree on here. And we're going to see what happens. Oops, I'm going to knock something over again. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to flood it first. And it actually doesn't matter, like, which direction you print. Because, um, you know, you can kind of do it in either direction. And there is our next. Print. Oh, wow, we completely, did they completely cover <coughs> the? Oh, no, that's because I didn't use the other thing. Okay, so there's that one. So it's just leftover yellow ink? That came yeah, that was just the leftover. And oh, once I cool. kind of print through, it will, oh wait, I didn't flood it. So that's the flood stroke, and here's the print stroke. And yeah, that was just that leftover yellow. You'll see as it, as it goes, it'll have less and less of that. There's another one. Could you experiment with like only partially flooding, like mostly flooding the you, board before the new one? You want the flood stroke to be, you, there's nothing, nothing will be cooler about it being partially flooded. Like if you don't flood, you'll get kind of like that kind of area. It'll just mm -hmm. look sort of like not fully there or something. It's sort of hard to explain, but like you definitely, the flood stroke is not really something to like mess with. Okay. It, the other reason that the flood stroke is important is that it's keeping your ink wet. Um, it's keeping your screen from drying out. And that's really important. So that's another reason to like always be really good about the flood stroke. So this time I'm printing, I'm, print, I'm doing this kind of backwards. I'm like printing forward and flooding backwards, but it, it kind of doesn't matter. Usually people print toward themselves and flood away from themselves. Let's try, that's the flood stroke, and I'm gonna leave it right here. Now I'm gonna try printing on one of my other ones. This is like turning out to be kind of the ugliest print in the world, I'm sorry about this, mm -hmm. but let's try this one now. And we're gonna try printing on, maybe we'll make it go that way. Print stroke goes this way. Mm -hmm. I think that was because I. I think you did a double flood too. Did I do a double flood? Maybe. Because you were back <laughs> and you did it like you normally. Know.